In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Ibis Ripley. Hi, I'm Tess from Dusty Betty. Before I jump into the review, I wanted to let you know that I am sponsored by Ibis and they sent me this bike to ride. It's been a lot of fun and I'm excited to share the review, but I did want to let you guys know that Ibis does allow me to let you guys know not only what I like, but also the things that I don't like about bikes that I ride. Just to give you a little bit about my rider profile, I'm riding a size small Ripley. I'm five feet, four inches tall and I weigh 115 pounds. I've got a 30 inch inseam and my home trails are in Sedona, Arizona. If you're not familiar with the Ibis Ripley, this bike has 120 millimeters of travel in the rear shock and the fork has 130 millimeters of travel. It's just a fun, light, whippy, easy to throw around trail bike and uh, let's uh, dive into the review. Now I will preface this review with saying that this class of trail bike in that 120, 130 range is probably my favorite kind of bike in general. So that makes reviewing this bike an extra delight for me. I just feel like it's a really versatile range if you do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, it can handle some tough stuff, but um, it also has low enough travel that it's really playful and still really, really fun to climb on. And I love to climb. The 29 inch wheels on this bike bring the versatility of this bike up a notch. It's not just marketing hype, it really does roll through chunky sections a lot easier. Holes where, you know, it'd be easy to stuff a tire, it really does help this bike just flow through some of that stuff. It also kind of helps smooth out abrupt transitions from like a steep roll to a flat. And uh, so I've really, really enjoyed the 29 inch wheels. Another key feature that I feel like makes this frame stand out is a really low standover. This is a handy thing for any rider, but it also makes riding a bike like this doable for someone who is maybe shorter or doesn't have long legs. Now, also I would say because of those two factors with the 29 wheels, with the low standover, combined with some other aspects of this bike's geometry, if you are a smaller rider who's been on the fence about whether or not to try 29 inch wheels, this would be a great bike to make that transition on. It's configured around this wheel size very well so that even for smaller riders, it doesn't feel unwieldy. If you're like me and you really enjoy technical climbs, this is a fantastic bike to do the job. You know, other bikes will get you there, but this bike will make it really fun to get there. It is just really easy to pick up get up and over things and kind of manhandle it. It's been such a fun climber and really helped me uh, rediscover the joy of sessioning climbs. Now I put a lot of time and effort into planning and creating these videos for you guys and I couldn't do it without support from companies like Laser. Laser is my helmet sponsor and I just wanna take a quick break to tell you a little bit about them. When it comes to protecting your head while you ride, you do not want to mess around. And Laser has more five-star best available protection rated helmets from Virginia Tech than any other brand. Right now I'm using the Jackal and this helmet is very rich in features. It's got some fun little details like the magnetic buckle that helps it snap into place. It's also got grip material on the back for goggle days to help your goggles stay in place on those dusty or muddy days. And also the bolts that hold the visor in place, they're covered on this model, which gives it a little more of a sleek design. Another thing that I really like about laser helmets is that they have really great ventilation, which is a big deal to me. Um, I live in the desert and so it is hot here and having that breathability makes a really big difference. If you want a helmet that's a little more affordable, but you don't want to compromise on safety, check out Laser's Chiru helmet. It's got a five-star safety rating, it comes with MIPS, and it retails for around $70. I'll include a link to Laser in the description. Make sure you go there and check out their whole line from the Jackal to the Chiru and everything in between. Let's talk a little bit about wheels and tires. Now I've got the carbon rims on this bike, and to be honest, when I'm riding a full suspension bike, I'm not really sensitive enough to tell the difference in the ride feel um, of one wheel to another. To me, on full suspension, the biggest deal is weight because I'm pretty small. If I can shave a half a pound here or there, it, it makes a big difference to me. So, uh, but I have really been enjoying these rims. Um, 
This bike also came specced with Maxxis Asagai tires. Now that is a lot of tire for a bike like this, but it does give this otherwise light and spry bike a little more of a punky and fun downhill aggressive feel. I also had the option that I could have gone with Nobby Nix on this bike, which would have been a little bit lighter, but where I live, some of the lava rock that we have just shreds those knobby nicks to pieces. So I figured, I know that I like acid guys. I probably won't keep them on this bike forever just because of how heavy they are. Um, but I did get to run those for a while and I still had a lot of fun. Like I said, it, it kind of gives this bike a slightly different personality just by changing the tires. So I did eventually switch those out for something a little bit lighter so I could shave more weight and experience this bike in a different way. So I went with a specialized ground control back here and up in the front, I've got a specialized butcher. Those have been great. They still have a ton of grip. I mean, maybe not quite as aggressive, obviously, as the Asagai, which is a downhill tire, but they've still done phenomenal. Um, we have a lot of loose stuff, especially as we get into the summer here. I feel like I can be pretty precise with it and uh, get the grip that I want. I'm running 2.3, which is a hair narrower of a tire than what I think is recommended for this bike. Um, it does fine though. It kind of spreads the tire a little bit wider. So I get a lot of surface area and a lot of grip. Um, but I just know that I'm going to get a little more scuffage on the outside of my rims from that. But it's not a huge deal. And I've really been loving this configuration on this bike. And swapping tires on this took this bike down from the 29-ish pound range down to about the 28 pound range. I don't think it was a full pound difference, but um, probably half three quarters of a pound I lost by switching out the tires. This bike comes with a 125 dropper. It's a bike yoke. It's a great dropper, but this one is a little bit too short for me. As you can see, I've got quite a bit of uh, space sticking out. So I will be upgrading to a longer dropper post so I can get more range. So, you know, if you're like me and you've got longer legs, it's great because you'll get so much range out of a bike like this because of how low this line comes. Um, but it's still, again, it's still really nice because if you're a shorter rider, it's hard to find bikes with this low of standover. So um, even if you have that collar slammed down, you're still getting quite a bit of clearance. This bike has a 66.5 degree head tube angle. And I think that is actually a fantastic head tube angle on this bike. If it was much steeper, I don't really like the way that suspension forks feel um, as you get into steeper bikes. I feel like it's pitched, you know, slack enough that it's just really able to just jam through stuff when you're riding down, you know, chunky stuff on the downhills. Um, so I really love that. But at the same time, um, it's not so slack that I feel like it gets wandery on the climbs. This bike is actually very, very precise. I feel like this bike is great for picking my way through little technical climbs where it just keeps coming at you and you're having to pick lines. This bike is so easy to put right where I want it, which makes it really, really fun. Now the Ripley is a pretty short bike and that short reach and especially that short wheelbase is what gives it a lot of that you know, people talk about how fun and playful and flickable it is. And it just is so fun to throw into little tight, successive turns. And uh, I would say that the length of this bike has a lot to do that. That's where a lot of that personality comes from. Um, but, you know, 425 for the size small, you know, for me, compared to some of the other bikes that I've ridden in the last few years, it is much shorter. In fact, I'm between sizes. And so I really hemmed and hawed about, should I go with the small? Should I go with the medium? You can check out that video. I will make sure I link it. But the tricky part is since I made that video, I kind of changed my mind. So at the time I rode the small and the medium back to back and I ended up deciding to go with the small. The medium didn't feel outrageously big, not like I thought it would. It, you know, you jump from 425 reach to 450, I believe, or somewhere around there. Um, and I thought, God, 450, I don't think I've ever been on a bike that long. I, I thought that was going to feel crazy long and it really didn't. But I could feel the difference in the playfulness for sure. Ultimately, I decided to go with the small because I was just really infatuated with that flickable feeling, like throwing it into little successive turns. And um, I love that. Hindsight, this is pretty much, even though I've got other bikes in the barn, this is the bike that I wanna ride almost all the time. And even though it doesn't necessarily hold me back on any of the trails that I ride, I do think I would have a little more confidence sometimes when I'm doing steep rolls if I had gone with the medium. Yeah. So that's my thoughts on the sizing of this bike. All right, now let's not neglect the suspension on this bike. The shock is a float DPS. I've got a Fox 34 fork on the front. Um, 
this bike comes with Ibis's signature traction tune, which is, it's a really, really light tune and um, it has a lot less dampening. So it just allows the suspension to move a lot more freely and be really sensitive to every little nuance in the trail. And I think that makes these bikes that have this suspension um, really a treat if you're riding a lot of chunk or especially if you're riding you know even moderate chunk with really long days because every little hit you take on a full day on the bike all that really starts to add up now one thing i will say about the traction tune especially with the shock is it's taken me a lot longer to get it dialed just how i want because it is so light and i'm used to riding bikes that are tuned for riders that weigh probably 50 or more pounds than me so I did end up having to actually put a larger volume spacer in this bike, which I did a video on that. I've never had to do that before. I'm always taking those things out of my um, suspension. So that's been kind of interesting. And even then it's still taken a lot of time to get it dialed because to me, the traction tune just feels so, so different from anything I've ever ridden. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm used to, again, riding bikes because they're tuned for larger riders. You know, a little click here and a little bit of PSI there doesn't make a huge difference. It takes usually dramatic changes, but in this, you know, the nuance makes a difference. And I'm actually this close to going to a suspension setup expert and seeing if I can get some help to maybe get it dialed even a little bit better. If that's something that you guys are interested in seeing in a video, let me know in the comments. And it's also kind of a good thing to know that they have two different shock tunes. One is more typically spec'd on the small and medium and another shock that's for a little bit larger riders that they would put typically on their large and extra large. So don't worry, you're not, you know, if you weigh 200 pounds, you're not gonna get the exact same shock, but I do get a lot of bob. I don't notice it when I'm doing technical climbing because at that point, the DW Link is doing its job and keeping that back tire glued to the ground, giving me tons of traction, pedaling through crazy, chunky, gnarly stuff. Um, however, I do really notice the bob, especially on flat terrain. Another question that I keep getting since I've been riding this bike is, do you ever ride your Ritmo AF anymore? Um, because it is a little bit longer, there are a few rides that I'll bust it out for occasionally, but 90, 95% of the time, it's Ripley time for me because where I live, you have technical descents to all of the technical descents and we also have a lot of intermittent up and down and so i place a really high value on climbing and how enjoyable my climbing experience is so i'd rather be on a smaller lighter more spry bike and push it a little bit into some of the descents um, rather than kind of doing it the other way around where i've got to really push my bigger bike uphill put a little more energy into that but then maybe I get to let loose a little bit on the down. So it's totally a trade-off. Kind of in summary, I would say this bike is not going to be an ideal replacement for your enduro bike if you like to smash through some downhills. And if, you know, technical climbing isn't a priority because of the trails where you ride, maybe you've got smoother climbs to get to your gnarly descents. But if you like to do a little bit of everything you want something that can handle some technical climbs along with the technical descents um, and that's going to be enjoyable to ride not just for those quick after work rides but also potentially some really long days in the saddle the ripley just might be the bike for you thanks so much for watching you guys and don't forget to jump in in the comments if you were to pick a bike from ibis's current line which bike would be at the top of your list get dusty